Hi, and thanks for clicking on this video. I'm Melissa. This is Future Editing Melissa. Um, the video you're going to see tonight, or today, whatever you're watching this, um, I filmed on our back deck the other night. I wanted to do a crochet and chat because all the content that I'm working on right now is going to take multiple days um, to do. So I figured I'd do that. Um, that being said, I am not going to reduce any of the background noise on it because there's a lot of birds in our area and like the chirping is like really beautiful and a lot of people like that, right? So I figured I would leave that in. Uh, that that being said, there are um, two airplanes that fly overhead. Um, so it does get like a bit of a buzzing noise and they do come pretty close together. Um, I think within like three or four minutes of each other. So um, be prepared for that. Um, but everything else in the video seems pretty good. Um, if you want to turn up your volume once you see me on my back deck outside, feel free. Um, I do try to keep my voice down when I'm outside, only because the small town where we live, the air is very still. So if I'm having a conversation on this end of town, everybody on the other end of town can still hear me because our voices travel in the still air. Um, I apologize about the sound, but that's just the way it goes. I did order a new um, portable little clip-on microphone things um, for my videos for content creating. I'm just holding Larry here because his nail he needs to trim his nails and I don't want the noise. So enjoy the video. If you would do like to like and subscribe, I would really appreciate it. I'm gonna get more motivated to continue creating content the more subscribers I get and the more views I get because you know it's nice to see that people are watching my videos. So hope you enjoyed this one. It's not super exciting but if you want to listen to me crochet and chat for a bit, feel free. Um, maybe you want to pick up a project and just have me on in the background. I'm completely fine with that. I do it all the time with the YouTube videos. So I hope you enjoy it and I hope you have a great day today. Good evening from Melissa and Larry's tail. <laughs> Don't worry, he's still attached. Today is Friday, June. No, it's not. I keep thinking it's Friday. I keep wishing it was Friday, but no, it's not. Tomorrow is Friday. No, we're not gonna play with that right now. That's a throw toy. Dogs. <laughs> so today is Thursday, unfortunately. I have a candy in my mouth, so sorry. Um, it's a beautiful evening here in Ontario. I think it's like 21 degrees with a nice cold breeze. Mm, feels so good. I love this weather. This is my favorite weather. So, sitting outside, gonna do some crocheting. Obviously. Trying to find the center pole. <laughs> Without a yard barf. Neighbor probably thinks I'm crazy. I'm sitting here talking to the camera. He probably thinks I'm talking to myself. But. That's a regular occurrence, so it's fine. Plus, we're pretty close. Not like a distance, but I know them well. <laughs> We've lived here for 10 years, so I don't know your neighbor after 10 years, right? I don't know what I plan to do with this video. Um, I do like watching people on YouTube just sit and crochet and chat. I was watching one lady. I'll have to link her below. I don't remember her name right now. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, lady. She calls it yarn yakking. <laughs> like, yakking. So, I thought that was funny. My eyes get sore sometimes. Just from, you know, being on screens all day. Okay. One little knot in there, but I don't care. <laughs> Can you not eat things off the ground, sir? God. Honestly. Larry's only one. Just turned one. He's still a turd. To be expected, right? So I'm gonna make a hexagon cardigan. Seen somebody online had grabbed a bunch of um, Super Saver Ombre, which I already love. And then she did the armpit a little bit of the color, two rows of black, two rows of color, and repeat. 
and it looked really pretty with the ombre, so let me give it a try. So this is color scuba, like scuba dive. It's really pretty. I've used it before. It's nice with my employee discount. I get a good discount. <laughs> so, grabbed this at the retail store yesterday. After work. It's our neighbor's truck. He's moving something or other. I probably will not <coughs> remove background noise on this video. Only because I know some people enjoy nature. <coughs> and all of it. All the sounds. So probably won't, depending on like how it sounds when I edit this. As I said, I don't know what I'm gonna do with this video. <laughs> um, but it's nice to sit and chat, I think. Maybe you'll enjoy it too. I hope you do anyway. If not, just exit. But thanks anyway for clicking on the video. Tomorrow is my husband's birthday. And he's so hard to buy for. So I said to my friend who was doing my pedicure tonight, I said, what'd you get your husband for his birthday? And she said, oh my God, I don't remember. <laughs> so she is so helpful. Um, so I always end up getting him bars of soap because they're expensive now. Deodorant, because it's also expensive. I watch for sales, like leading up to his birthday. What else did I get him? Oh, underwear. He likes a certain kind, you know, like the rest of us. So, got him that. What else did I get Steve? Oh, yeah, I wanted to get him like one more big item, but he's so hard to shop for because he doesn't like want anything, he doesn't use anything, and such a simple man, which I'm thankful for, but at the same time, like, please want something. <laughs> so, the grocery store tonight, I just got him some chip dip, one of the bigger containers, and a big bag of, like, ruffle chips. <laughs> Happy birthday to Steve. But it's the small things, he'll like that gift. entire time I've been doing a regular granny square. That's not a hexagon, is it? That's four sides, not six. So that's what happens when you're distracted and talking. And maybe you're looking at the screen and you're like, why is she doing a regular granny square? Could you not have told me? You should have told me. I apologize for portrait mode um, with the video here. It's just the way my tripod is working outside. to keep, keep one cluster, so yay. Let's try this again. Yes, I could have clept, kept four clusters, but it's a week night. My brain is tired from work. This week has been crazy. Um, I work at the reception desk at work, and some weeks are just nuts. No, it hasn't been a full moon. It's just been a crazy, crazy week. Larry, stay away from there. Hey! Larry, get back. Turd. I'm sitting on a cute day bed I bought for myself. Part of my grandfather's inheritance money. We didn't have any patio furniture out here, and we've had this deck for, oh god, I don't know how many years now. Probably about six years. Yeah, I'd say six years. And it's a really large deck. It's 27 by 14. We just had no furniture out here. It's hard to afford patio furniture. It's so expensive now. So, I waited for a sale after I got Papa's inheritance money. And I bought this nice day bed. Can't really see it because I'm sitting on it. Um, and the nice love seat which Steve sits on sometimes when we're outside, so. It's on her back. 
or back deck. I sit out front mainly, um, depending on, you know, how bright the sun is at the time. That's why I'm not out there right now, because the front of our house faces west, and the sunsets sometimes are blinding. It'd be nice to be in the shade tonight. I think at some point tonight I'll need a sweater. So what I usually film with is my old iPhone. But of course, as soon as I set up on the tripod tonight, it was like, eh, I'm dead. Kinda told me that I'm inside though, right? So, oh well. So now I'm using my iPhone that I, you know, use daily. Last time I made a hexagon cardigan. I did not realize I only did five sides until the second panel was done. Um, and only the second panel had five sides, but it's like, well, crap. <laughs> well, had to frog that and then do it all over again. Luckily, it was like a smaller one, it wasn't like plus size. So it didn't take long, but it was still like, why didn't I check a few rounds in? can be pretty and smart. That's my excuse. What's the timer at? About 10 minutes now. You're still with me, thank you. When I started knitting crocheting during COVID, I guess I was knitting more so. I taught myself to crochet in 2023. So, um, so during COVID, I watched a lot of YouTube. And um, it was amazing how many like yarny content creators are out there. And like honestly, I'm really enjoying it, like watching YouTube and stuff. I do enjoy, um, you know, stash tours. Um, a lot of people. A lot of my watchers have enjoyed the one that I did about my acrylic yarn. So, I got a lot of comments on that one. I was honestly surprised. Um, because I wasn't sure if it would have a lot because, you know, everybody has acrylic yarn in their stash, right? But everybody's different acrylic, which I think is great. I like watching stash tours. Um, yarn organization is probably one of my favorite things. Um, it's a little bit of a stash tour too, usually. So, I enjoy that part of YouTube. And like, um, daily or weekly, like what I crocheted in a week. Or like, you know, studio vlogs, as some people call them. I don't know if I'll make any of those, just because I come home and I do like, maybe an hour crochet in the evenings. So like, what am I gonna update you on for that long? You know, that bit of time. I could do like a like a weekly compilation. I might do that at some point. I really love crochet time lapses and like watching them. But the problem with making them is you spend three hours on the couch or the chair, or whatever, filming a time lapse and you get like thirty seconds of content. <laughs> so that's kind of annoying. So it's been about, at this point, it's been about four or five days since I started my new charity initiative, The Blanket Fairy. And I've only had the one um, nominated child teenager so far. Um, I might post it in a few more Facebook groups. I just, I don't want to post it as me because I want to remain anonymous. So not every group allows you to post anonymously, right? So. Oh well. The whole point of it is to bring a, like a smile to someone's face and also to use up some of my yarn. <laughs> As you've seen, I have a lot of blanket yarn. If you haven't seen that video, go to my channel and watch Yarn Organization Part 2 and you'll see my big cabinet with all the blanket yarn. 
Larry. Just step on the tripod. And it falls over real easy, so. I'll probably do five rows of um, the blue to start out with, like in the armpit. And then I'll switch to the two rows black, two rows blue. I like the two the two row repeat because it kind of looks like like teeth, I guess in a way. I'll show you more about that. I'll show you. If you crochet, you know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> so with this ombre yarn, I kind of want both sides to be pretty similar. So I think what I'm going to do is do two panels at once, instead of doing one and then doing one. So after five rows of this, I'll do another start of a panel for five rows, and then both of them will get the two black rows. Larry found one of his toys. What are you doing? Look at my parents, you on your bone. Big cheek. Come here. Here, come up. Larry is a sheep a doodle. My last guy was an old English sheepdog, purebred. I miss him a lot. It's next week will be a year since he's been gone. He was only three when he passed. Um, got lymphoma, cancer, and within like eleven days he was gone. So that really sucked. That was the hardest time of my life for sure. Um, and then I had a kind of a rescue situation for about a month, but it just didn't work out. He needed uh, the rescue guy needed somebody home, like twenty four seven with him. So luckily. His original breeder found someone, and we keep in touch on Facebook. And she's home 24 7. She's retired. Um, her and her husband love dogs, so they have quite a few. <laughs> but he's thriving there, so. I think about him every day, though. He was such a sweetheart. I even asked for a new position at work just so I could, like, keep him here with me, but it didn't work out. That's okay. That means I have Larry. Larry just turned one, um, how many days ago? No, oh, 10 days ago, on the 17th. His first birthday, and he's a good boy, he is. I cannot leave him alone in the house, though, if there's any tissues around, because Larry loves to have a good tissue toss, and by that I mean grab a hold of a tissue box and shred it to pieces tissues and everything. It's happened a few times now. And no matter how much you give him crap and say like, no, like this isn't good. And you rub his nose and the tissues on the floor. He still loves them. So, I mean, it could be worse. It could be something nice, you know, valuable. But it's like, dude, just stop. Please stop. you guys have any content idea or like tell me what you love watching on YouTube I would love to know because we all have our favorites and like I can take a lot of inspiration from other people but I don't want to be the run-of-the-mill crochet YouTube channel either and that being said like I, I'm gonna film what I want to film um, like uh, earlier I was talking about the acrylic stash tour I did kids down the street now. Larry's excited. Right? Yeah, go 
probably. Um, I didn't think anybody would really like pay attention too much to the acrylic stash tour, but it was fun to see and a lot of people commented and said, you know, cool, thanks. Um, love stash tours. And then in my thrifted yarn video, one of them, because I love thrifting yarn, thrifting yarn um, somebody commented and said, I love how much your face lights up when you see a, a pretty yarn that you thrifted. So that was really sweet of someone to say. I love vintage yarn. It's probably the thing I love most about yarn is thrifting it from the thrift store and getting it the vintage ball bands. I just find them so pretty compared to the busyness of them now. Something I've been watching on YouTube the um, past few days has been everybody's um, Hobby Lobby clearance haul for the year. Because that big 70% off sale or something like that. We don't have Hobby Lobby in Canada, so that kind of sucks, but it's cool to see what people are buying. And I think I watched a few back to back, and everybody got something different because everybody's different taste in yarn, right? I think four rows is good um, for like the beginning armpit part. So let's count the size, will we? Hard to do when you have but a needle in your hand. The hook. One, two, three, five, six. Thank God. I just realized I never brought out my scissors. That's the one thing I always forget when I come outside or go for a drive with my husband. Forget the freaking scissors. Oh well. I don't like to do that, but oh well, it happens. I'm not getting up. <laughs> this day bed is very hard to get out of. Something I didn't consider, but that's okay. Oh, there we go, that's the start of one. And as I said, I'm gonna move on to blue with the other side. I wanna adjust my butt though. Much as I like my day bed, it's new. The cushions are very slippery. So every time you move on it, the cushions slip. And there's no straps or anything on them. But like I take them off every night, but I'm like out here and using it. So it's okay. I had my pedicure tonight and Larry really likes the hand lotion. Do you mind? I keep bumping the camera. The tripod I'm using is like a an arm thing that you kind of twist onto a table, but I have it twisted onto a deck railing, like what you see behind me there. I never do a magic circle. I don't like them because every time I've done one, it becomes loose. And people online have said, like, oh, I don't know why that would happen to you. But I, I don't know. You just get used to, like, what works for you, right? I guess I could talk about my uh, experience with knitting and crocheting. So my grandmother, Ruth, my dad's mom, she taught me to knit when I was like three years old. Um, she figured out that I couldn't sit still. Now I know it's because of ADHD. I was diagnosed as an adult. Um, but I do like having my hands busy. I always have. Um, so she taught me how to knit when I was three, and I did it for a long, long time. Probably up until the age of... How old was I when I started my sewing business? 22. Yeah, so I probably knit until about the age of three, until 22. Um, 
do a lot of charity work and stuff and some hats and scarves to sell. Nothing like skilled or anything. Like I never, I made a few pieces of clothing, but not many. Um, and then when I started my sewing business, I kind of lost touch, lost touch with it because I had to be so busy with my business all the time. And that kept my hands busy then, so. Um, lost touch with it for a bit. And then when I started working at Spin Right, um, they had asked me, they had said, do you know how to do any knitting or crocheting? And I said, I don't know how to crochet. Um, but I'm pretty good with knitting. And then they, you know, got me started on, you know, some test projects and stuff. So I've been doing that for them. Um, there's never any really crochet project for me, but that's okay. Um, I like knitting too. I like them both. Of course, there's different pros and cons to each. Crochet is much easier to like fix than knitting is. Because if you drop a stitch in knitting, you're kind of SOL. Um, I'm sure there are ways that people can get around that, but I don't really care to. And then in 2020, yeah, early 2023, my grandmother Ruth, the same one that taught me how to knit. My other grandma did both too, but Grandma Ruth was a teacher, um, like an actual school teacher. So she's used to teaching kids. Um, when she passed in 2023, um, I tried to pick up crochet again and I was able to do it. So she left me her crochet superpowers. Um, she tried to teach me as a kid multiple, multiple times. My sister was really good at crocheting. Um, she picked it up right away and I picked up knitting. So when Grandma Ruth passed, I was like, I'm curious, I'm gonna try again. And off I went and been in love with it ever since. <laughs> One of the young girls at work, she works in the retail store. The other ladies that work there are teaching her how to knit and crochet right now. So it's fun to chat with her about that when I go in. Ask her, you know, which one she likes more and whichever. I asked her yesterday when I went and got this stuff. And she was recently learning to crochet. Um, she said she can do like the basic stitches now. Um, but she said she likes knitting more because there's only like the two stitches, the knit and the purl. Um, of course, it's just like standard stuff right now for her. She's not doing any cables yet or anything. But it's fun to hear what people like versus not. One of my favorite things to ask my co-workers or anybody that I meet that knits and crochets what their favorite yarns off yarns are I always say give me your top five or top three so if you want to leave yours down below feel free to do that it's one of my favorite things I'm sorry if you have to turn up the volume to hear this like me talking I don't want to be like shouting because we live in a very small town and the air is very still. So if somebody is outside having a campfire at night, I can hear their whole conversation. Um, and the whole town can, basically. So I try to keep it hush hush when I'm outside a bit. Sometimes that's impossible if you have friends over, but we just nothing. airplane going overhead. Actually, I might have to grab a sweater. A little chilly in the shade. So, if you've watched my channel before, you probably know what my favorite yarns are. Um... I can't really say in any particular order, it just depends on the mood, which is relatable, right? So, let me say by project. Blankets I like to use, Softy Chunky or Bernat Blanket Yarn. One being acrylic, one being polyester. Um, cardigans, I prefer the same thing, Softy Chunky. Blanket Yarn I use sometimes, not often, but often enough. 
summer cardigans I use Karen Cotton Cakes because it's a cotton acrylic blend. Um, Burnett Pop Bulky, now discontinued. I have a lot of it here <laughs> because it discontinued. And my work life is like, do you want a box? And I was like, okay, thank you. Um, I usually knit it into squares and put it into some blankets for charity. It's a very, very heavy yarn. So I can't do like strips with it because that's how heavy it is. It's too painful on the hands on the wrist. Um, but it makes great blankets for the homeless because it's so heavy. Pretty sure it's 100% acrylic. I want to say it is. But like it's like a six bulky. Bless you. This is a sneeze from Larry. I can't wait. Really Three rows. One more. And um, what else do I make? Isn't that crazy that, you know, you know, you, you crochet all the time, but you forget what you've made. Um, I've done like three or four amigurumi things. Not a fan at all. So, just not a fan. That's okay. I've made clothing. Um, what else do I make? It's mainly cardigans that I make. Man, t-shirts in the summer. Um, I wasn't planning on actually selling. Larry, hey, out of there. Um, I wasn't planning on making um, like any profit or anything off the crochet. Like in the in the fall last year, I made my first cardigan. I gave it to a friend. She's like, "Oh, they're so cute," and her friends started asking about it. And, you know, word of mouth, right, type thing. So I made a few, and, or no, did I make a few? No, I made one, just one, and I posted it on Facebook Marketplace. And, oh my goodness, did it blow up, and I could not believe it. Like, in the first week, I think, on Facebook Marketplace, it had 7,000 clicks. Of course, I didn't get 7,000 cardigan orders, thank God. Um, but I think, like, the color that I did helped. It wasn't, like, neon or anything crazy. It was um, brown, taupe, and navy. Boring, boring, and boring, in my opinion. Um, yeah, so it blew up online. People were ordering that one and that one. And, and then eventually I took a picture of all of my um, Karen anniversary cakes. And then I let people choose from those. And then I took a picture of each of the softy, chunky colors I'm able to get. Um, people started ordering from those. And that's what I used. I'm using a lot more. Not a lot more acrylic now, but more acrylic than I was using last year. Blanket Aaron, another one I do cardigans with. Feels like a big soft blanket giving you a hug. Like a snuggie, kind of. Sometimes the corners look pointed and it's like, okay, is this like, is this where I'm supposed to slip stitch? But no, I need slip stitch over here. <laughs> and the airplane. We are basically right in the, I wouldn't say the middle of Ontario. Because uh, you know, Ontario is a really large province, but we got all the airplanes flying over because the airport is like, Kitchener's to the east, you know, and Toronto's to the east, and then if they're flying west, they usually, like, go over our area. And, like, Toronto is about two hours away, but you gotta get west somehow. <laughs> Saturday night we're going out with my in-laws for my husband's birthday so his parents they have a really good uh, Chinese buffet near us so of course Steve got to pick because it's his birthday I think Russell's celebrating my birthday which was in March and they always take us out for like our birthdays but I've just been so mentally exhausted from work that I'm like they're like oh, let us know what day we want to go for your birthday and I just I still haven't and that's been since, like, March, so... Oops. 
but I also don't want to put them out and they can go other way even though they love it. So next year I'll be better. Probably not. Okay, so there is a little bit difference in color, but it's not like, you know, night and day. So pretty cute. So that's the first first row that'll go in the armpit. Then I'm gonna switch to black. I really like Brunette Super Value. Another really nice one, but it's exclusive to Walmart, is Burnett Premium. And I use that one quite a bit. Um, but as I said, it's exclusive to Walmart. Um, and yarnspirations.com, you can get it there, and that's where I get my employee discount on it. But I can't get it at the outlet store. So, if I want to, like, crochet something on a whim, I can't go and get it at the retail store. I mean, sure, I have lots in my stash, but it's never the right color. Am I right? Is that always the case? I know a lot of people start in the corner. I don't like to start in the corner. I just don't. I think the ends are easier to weave in when you don't start in the corner. If that makes any sense. I don't want to see that little tail, you know, at the beginning of the row here. So I usually try to crochet it in. Most of the time I'm unha unhappy with how it looks going straight across there. Like, you know what I mean? Um, so I usually end up taking it out anyway and then doing it properly with a tapestry needle. But everybody has their little quirks, right? <laughs> and preferences. Why are you licking the deck? You're strange. So, that drives me nuts. Like that. Right there. So, that's usually why I take it out. Or, like, I'll take it out at the end. And weave in all the ends. Yeah, Bernad, um, Super Value and Premium are pretty similar. Um, they're very soft compared to Red Heart Super Saver. And yes, I know all about that discussion online. Um, it's one of our brands that work. I, I still like it. And like, once you wash it, it, it softens up a lot. And something about the dye and like how it has to set and blah, blah, blah. I know nothing about it. Um, I don't work in manufacturing. I work in the office, but... I have asked at work, and they said that it is part of like the dye process, that it's a little starchy. I think these two, incredibly different, like scratchy, because it's super savory, and soft. I actually have a girl swinging by my workplace tomorrow. She wants to try on some of my cardigans I had online. Um, She's plus size like I am, so she was like, I haven't seen anybody with like ready to go plus size stuff. And I was like, oh yeah, I have quite a few. Um, so she's gonna come by. She's like, I don't wanna get you in trouble at work. And I was like, we're pretty, like we're pretty chill. I mean, it's a Friday. Um, I wouldn't do it on Monday or Wednesday because those are the crazy days for me. Um, but on a Friday afternoon, most people are out of the office anyway. <laughs> and it's a long weekend here in Canada. Monday is Canada day. So, most people book off the Friday to have an extra long weekend. Wish I would have done that, but never thought about it. But the heat being so gross this time of year, except for tonight, it's beautiful. I just, I don't book a lot of the days off in the summer. In the fall, October specifically, is when we take our days off. Take a week off together, and then like I take a bunch of random Fridays off because we love autumn it's the best season I would love to live in a place where it felt like autumn for eight months and summer for four possibly two <laughs> so ten and two or eight and four that is the dream probably eight and four because I do like the warm weather I just don't like it when it's humid I don't mind hot, I don't like humid, because my asthma. I would also love to have a pool. 
but we have a public pool here in our small town. Um, you can go over and use. In July is when Aquafit and Aqua Zumba starts. I do go over to that a few times, usually. Um, it's something to do, get out of the house, cool down, meet some new people. And I think it costs $8 each time. You can also get like a pass, but I'm not gonna go probably more than four times so I don't get a pass for the summer. But it's fun, I enjoy it. First time I did Aquafit, I didn't know like what to expect. So like, of course, you know, you jumping in the jumping jacks and this and that, and I'm usually the youngest person there, but that's okay, I don't mind. <laughs> and um, they gave you like those, I don't know what they call them, pool dumbbells, I guess. So it looks like an exercise dumbbell. Um, but on the end, it's like two discs and they're like pool noodles. So you had to like push them down. And I did not realize how hard that was going to be. <laughs> like, you wouldn't think that's hard, but it is hard because of, you know, resistance. So my arms were sore after Aquafit last year. But still enjoyable. I know I keep jumping from subject to subject, but that's ADHD for you. I start one train of thought and 10 others pop into your mind and then off that original thought goes into cyberspace. So apologies, but if you like a chaotic mess, hi, my name's Melissa. <laughs> I think when I first started like YouTube channels and like social media, I was a little bit more afraid to be myself. Which, you know, sucks to think about. But I didn't want to be judged too quickly. Larry just let out a toot. He's a stinky boy. But it's my fault because I gave him a certain treat earlier. That makes him stinky, but... Oh well. We're outside, it's not so bad. When it's, you know, winter and the all the windows are closed, it's bad. <laughs> um... See, what was I just saying? See, it happened again. He distracted me with his butt. Nope, don't remember. You're like screaming at your TV, like you're like, Melissa, you were talking about this. Wish I could hear you. <laughs> I guess earlier I was talking about the Hobby Lobby clearance. We don't have Hobby Lobby up here in Canada. Um, we have Michael's. Um, i trying to think of any other craft stores we really have. Like, Michael's is like the big one here. Um, we get a few things at Walmart, but not a lot. Um, yeah, I can't really think of anything. Like, Joanne's now ships to Canada, which is nice, which is great. But with the, you know, exchange rate and stuff too expensive. I've never actually ordered from Joanne's. My family and I, we used to go cross-border every year for grandma's birthday, my mom's mom. So we go every August for her birthday. And originally she loved it for shopping, but you know, as she slowed down, we just people watched. And I was happy to sit there with her and people watch while the rest of the ladies in the family went into their shopping. Um, she was my best friend, my, my grandma Muriel. She was the best. I miss her daily, of course. Um, but honestly, I have so many happy memories with her that, like, I feel like she raised me from, like, a young baby. Just because my... Just because, you know, family dynamics and stuff. And, like, my mom was always a working mom. And, yeah. So, I miss her a lot. She's a sweetheart. She's funny. So, yeah, we'd go across border and, like, do shopping trips and Right across border um, in Michigan, there's a lens mill. Like, I think it's their head office. No, not a lens mill. Um, what am I looking for? Oh, Mary Maxim, that's what it is. I knew it was a name, <laughs> so Mary Maxim. And there's also a Mary Maxim here in Paris, Ontario. Uh, that's probably about an hour and a half south of where I am ish. I guess the other craft store we have here in Canada is called Lens Mill. 
think they're only in Ontario. It might be in one other province, but I don't know which. Because it's like a family owned thing. And yeah, it's a nice store. Um, but it has your run of the mill stuff. Like it's nothing special. But still a good store to visit if you're passing through a town that has it. So the name Len, plural, Lens Mill. If you want to look it up. Larry is currently right beside the camera and bird watching. He loves birds and squirrels. He hasn't been able to catch any of them yet, though. I wish he would catch some squirrels because not a fan. They make a big mess. So he scared quite a few of them away, which is nice. So the neighbors love having him around, too. <laughs> My last guy that I lost last year, Boomhauer was his name. We're big fans of the TV show called King of the Hill. Boomhauer was a character on there. Um, he never had any interest in squirrels or birds. He'd look at them and be like, hmm, that's nice. I don't care. And then this guy was like, let me have it. <laughs> and I encourage it with the squirrels. The more he scares them, the better. And then they'll go away. Birds are less frightened of them, it seems. Um, maybe because they have flight and they can just fly away. But I think it'd be easier for him to get a bird than it would be a squirrel. Squirrels are fast and they, you know, climb the trees and they get away quick. But he's been close a few times. So eventually he'll get one. <laughs> I don't know how that how that'll go for him, but I don't know if he'll ever get one. I don't know. I'm tempted to do three rows of the black. Um, and then do the blue just to see how I like it. So I don't want the blue rows to be too thin. Well, I don't want any of the rows to be too thin. I'm like, I don't know. But the two rows makes it look really neat. Kind of like, as I said, it looks like it has teeth <laughs> because of like the jets. So like here, I consider that looking like teeth. And then when I put the blue on, it'll look the same. If you've made a hexagon cardigan, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Well, if you've done anything with the two row repeat of the granny stitch, you know what I'm talking about. Oh, I guess I could talk about some... I was commissioned recently by a, a gal um, to make three cardigans for her, so that was cool. Um, the first one was the Wild Bloom Cardigan by Evelyn and Peter. It was a really pretty, pretty stitch. Um, I had to switch yarns like when I started it just because what I picked just didn't work. Um, so yeah, I thought it was really cool looking. Uh, so basically the repeat was skip two or skip three and double crochet, or was treble crochet, treble crochet. Um, five stitches into one loop chain whatever right and then skip again um and she has like a video tutorial as well it's a beautiful beautiful stitch and then the next row the repeat would come at the center of the five treble crochets is when you do the treble crochet for like the third row so it always looks like little flowers like climbing and like it was a really pretty I really liked making it because, um, you know, it's something different than granny stitch or sing, uh, single crochet, etc. So, yeah, I enjoyed that one. Um, the second one, she had showed me like an inspo pick online and kind of how my brain grasped. I think she just said like she wanted something like this, but in black, right? And I was like, hmm, because what I think what she had showed me was like a facet yarn. But she wanted it to be a little bit warm um, and a bit thicker um, for like cool summer evenings like this. So I used um, Lily Sugar and Cream Black. She wanted it in black. And then I kind of, I don't want to say I created my own stitch. I think it's like really a V-stitch, but like I've never done it before. So I just kind of, what did I do? I did two panels and I did it side to side. So like I did two panels, but then I had to like separate for like the sleeve cut out 
And yeah, so I, I designed it myself. I didn't follow a pattern or anything. But the, the stitch that I ended up doing was um, double crochet, chain two, double crochet. So it's kind of like a V. I don't know what they call that, like a V stitch. I don't know. But it turned out really nice in the end. Um, yeah, it was cool to like, you know, do something a bit different. And then the, can you calm down? It's just somebody delivering something, not to us, to the neighbor. Can you sit? Sit down, you're fine. They're not coming over here. Turd. Bugs. Let me go around the other way. Let me give you a better view, you nosy bugger. Over this way. You want to come up? And then the third cardigan I had made, this girl, um, was uh, the Habitat cardigan by, um, oh, I'm blanking on the name. Habitat cardigan by, oh, Make and Do Crew. And that was a really cool cardigan to make. I never made one like that before. Basically, it was a rectangle with a different stitch um, called the Grit Stitch or the Suzette Stitch. So it was a uh, single crochet, double crochet repeat, well, skip one in the like original chain. And then when you went back the other way, um, you did that stitch into the single crochet. And then the way the like fabric created itself um, was really dense and it was really cool. Um, so I can see why she really loved the pattern. She seemed not Pinterest but didn't crochet herself. So that was a really nice one. And then, so you kind of like did rectangle uh, stitch up like the seams, like that would go right here, leave a hole for like the arms, and then you did the sleeve panels separate, um, and they were like a ribbing, and then you went around like the trim, like around the neck and up the front, and did 12 rows of ribbing there, so that was really cool, it was really pretty. It was very difficult to get a nice picture of though, um, when you're hanging it outside taking a picture for, you know, your social medias and stuff. It just, it looked ridiculous hanging on a hanger, just because of the way it was shaped, right? Um, but it was nice in the end. I really liked it. I might make myself one. And I've been doing the grit stitch on some charity blankets, too, just because of how thick it works up. It's really nice, and it's, yeah, it, it's, once I got the hang of it, like, you go pretty fast, like, single, double, single, double, single, double. And, yeah, I really liked it. So, I'll probably do that again in the cardigan. I really want to do it with, like, a... I, like I've been doing it in charity blankets, so that's brunette blanket yarn. Um, but I really want to do it in like um, maybe an acrylic, which is yes, what that cardigan was. It was a uh, brunette uh, premium, where she had found the inspiration. It was a partnership with Lion Brand, and I said to her, I said, "I'm sorry, I can't get that yarn because I don't get my employee discounts. It's not one of our brands." And she's like, that's fine, as long as it's a similar color. So we worked together on that, and she went with, um, it's called Purple Ash. Um, uh, and it's brunette. Premium. <laughs> I keep looking at Super Value, and I want to say Super Value, but no. It's similar, but it's not the same. And, yeah, so it turned out really nice. Um, it's, it's not super purple, it's like a purple gray. And it was the closest I could find to what she liked, so. Yeah. Um, I took those over to her. She lives about two hours south of where I live, and she got them the next day because I used like a courier service instead of like snail mail. So she was like, "They're so beautiful." So that's always nice to hear. You spend all that time making something, and and they love it. So it was nice that she ordered three cardigans from me. She was like, "Oh my God, your prices are so good." And I'm like, "Well, I work for the manufacturer. I get a discount, so I do reflect that in my prices." I know a lot of you will disagree with that, but. Crochets, so therapeutic for me. I really don't mind. I just, I'm not gonna charge two hundred fifty dollars for a cardigan because around here that's not gonna sell. And I know it's a target market, target market. Too bad. Do what I want. Dogs. Crazy. Why are you so crazy? Thinks he hears something. There's nobody here. There ain't nobody here, dude. Oh, 
my last guy, as I said, he's pure old English sheepdog, and he had his tail docked as a like a puppy puppy, like a day after being born. And Larry, over there, has a tail, as you've seen. Here it comes again. Oh, maybe not. So Larry has a tail. So it knocks a lot of things off the table. So there it goes. It's always a happy tail, which is cute. But it knocks a lot of things off the tables and whacks you in the face when you're, you know, sitting on the couch. And when the camera just bounced, that was his tail. He also has no spatial awareness. Larry, out of there, please. We have no stairs on our deck over there. It's just like an open space. Um, long story. I'm not going to bore you with those details. Eventually, there'll be stairs there. I'm waiting on my husband to do a project for the last how many years in order for the contractor to come back and put the stairs on. The contractor is a friend of ours. Um, so, if you have a spouse and you've been waiting for them to do one project for the last six, ten years, I feel your pain. It's not a project I can do myself, otherwise I would have done it by now. Good weekend project. Um, but, oh well. So, Larry thinks that he can go over there and jump off, but he hasn't yet. Hopefully he never does, because it's, it's not a huge drop, it's probably about five, eh, four feet. But still, I don't want him jumping off. And like, I do have it kind of sealed off with some bungee cords. Um, I had a lawn chair over there for a while, but my husband thought it was ugly and threw it out. I was like, I use that for the gate. He's like, I know, it's ugly. I'm like, you know, it's ugly. The fact that we don't have any stairs there. So. Larry, hey, come here. Come on. Come here, you turd. Larry's new favorite food treat is a bird poo. How was that tasty, huh? No idea. <laughs> But he gets it smells delicious to them. And as soon as I turn around, he's eating more. He hasn't got sick or anything, but... And they're just so small compared to him anyway, so... I really stopped him. I mean, like, I stop him, yes, but... Not much I can do about it. Turned out pretty nice. I like the blue. The blue and the black together look nice. The other ombre I got was, um, I got purple. I don't know if I'll do the purple or the black. Um, I don't know what color the purple would look good with. I don't want to do a white. I don't really have a gray that would match. I'll have to think about it. Maybe I'll do some variegated and make it really crazy. I love color, as you can probably see. Um, but sometimes you get comments of, oh, I would love to buy a cardigan from you if you made something gray. And I'm like, well, you can custom order that because I'm not going to pull gray from my cabinet and be like, I'm going to make a gray cardigan. That's just not me. Um, and they're happy to like, like I'm happy to do custom order for someone, but I'm just not going to pull out gray from my cabinet and be like, ooh, this would be so pretty. Because to me, that's not pretty at all. So I would like to do a whole bunch of these um, hexagon cardigans with the ombre because I was accepted into like a vendor market thing and um, it's really cute. It's I think this girl really likes the, um, A Court of Thorn and Roses by Sarah J. Moss, um, which is like a book series. And it's like a, I, I read the first book and part of the second I just lost interest. Such a big dog. He's only supposed to be about 60, 70 pounds, like his siblings, and he's like 120. But that's okay, because he like big dogs. Oh, his favorite people are walking by right now. Probably start whimpering soon.
Larry's very smart. So he knows exactly when they walk by. So he knows their voices. They only live four doors down. But he met them as a puppy and now he's in love with the lady. Which is fine by me. She watches them sometimes for me. And they love each other. Her husband's great too with dogs. They had dogs, but they're not gonna have any more because you know, close to retirement, they wanna travel. So I get it. I'm like, you can have Larry anytime. <laughs> um, yeah, so the um, vendor show is accepted into, um, she calls it the Dark Fay Market. So like Dark Fairy, I guess kind of, I guess would be, I don't remember the book that well, ADHD problems. Larry, out of there, hey, no sir. And, um, yeah, so it's called the Dark Fay Market. And, um, who went? A friend of mine went, and she was like, you have to apply for this, it'd be hard to get because the right aesthetic, like the niche market, right? So, I'm gonna do that, that's in October. So, if these don't sell before then, I'm sure they'll sell there. So I'm gonna do a bunch of different colors, but not like, all ombre. Larry, get out of there. Come here. So I'll do some red, like black and orange. Maybe some yellow thrown in there. Um, I also did a hexagon cardigan. And I've already shown a picture on YouTube. That one side was black and one side was rainbow. Um, and I pieced the rainbow together, uh, row by row. I didn't find like a good repeat one for like hexagon cardigan. And the chicky that ordered it from me, she wanted it to look exactly like the one online. So I wasn't able to do like a variegated, but that's okay. It was fun to like see what I already had in my stash um, to use, which was probably about, I'll say like six out of the 14 colors. And then of course I have a lot left of the other colors I had to order. And I'm fine with that. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'll probably do that. I'll do a few more of those. Because the one side was like black and like, like an ombre up from like a creamy white to gray. I used a Red Heart Super Saver for that too, the color Anthracite. Um, oh, sorry, an ombre. Anthracite. And then, what else did I? Most of them, like, I had to order. And I used Red Heart Super Saver. Sorry. For Larry's tail again. I used Red Heart Super Saver for most of them. It has the most colors. Um, I think it's like 53 or 46 different colors in that yarn. Um, I think that includes variegated. But you can't beat that, right? There's so many different shades of each color. In the end, there was two colors that I had ordered that I didn't end up using in the cardigan just because it just didn't flow right. And that's okay, I'll use it for something else. Something I tell myself that I am going to do, um, if you can tell by my tone, it doesn't happen is if I'm not going to use this here in three months, I'm going to donate it. And it doesn't really happen. Although I did donate some recently that was like new to me. I had thrifted it. It was the Vanna's Choice. I had three like little small balls that I had thrifted, but I knew I wasn't going to reach for them anytime soon. And this charity that I support, Blankets for Canada, Stratford, Ontario chapter. Um, when I was talking with the organizer recently, she had said, oh, we're getting really low on worsted weight. I think we could use some blah 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 and I was like okay I'll keep that in mind um and I'm going through like my stash I have like a bucket that I keep my donations in next time I go to that town throw it in the car and drop it on our porch <laughs> and um yeah so she had said they're getting low on acrylic and that's the one they use the most so I was like okay I'm not gonna reach for this and like the skeins are like a hundred gram skeins so like you know, standard, tiny. And I kept getting pushed to the back of my shelves. So I was like, okay, they can go. And then I also donated a bunch of my scrap yarn um, because she can piece it together for something, right? So yeah, she has a big group of volunteers um, in that town. And they do blankets, lap, lap cans for like nursing homes, um, like the little preemie hats for the hospitals and basically anything and everything. So I like to support them. And then I had recently found out that they will accept some granny squares if you have any. And I was like, do I ever? <laughs> because, you know, you make granny squares that, like, you're sitting on the couch just, you know, chilling. You want something, like, kind of brainless. 
sometimes they don't turn out or sometimes I make too many for a cardigan and I'm like what am I gonna do with one random sometimes I do make a scrappy cardigan and it's all random colors but not super often so I was happy to give her those because I had a whole box full so they're out of my house now which is nice and they'll be used for something and if they don't use it they pass along to a different chapter it's kind of like Project Linus but not a timer at oh, one hour and three minutes if you stuck with me that this far thank you um i'm shocked that you're still here <laughs> but maybe you have me on in the background while you're crocheting which i assume maybe you're cleaning your house right now if you are good job i'm proud of you i should clean soon well i clean every sunday just a routine i have um larry can you not eat bird poo Honestly. Crazy. Crazy dogs. Cute, but crazy. So, here's what I'm talking about. Um, when I say it looks like teeth. So it looks like, yeah, you know, cause there's two rows. So you have the, kind of like the spike down here and the spike up here, or the teeth, as you, if you will. So, hey, it looks pretty cool. I was looking at somebody else's, um, like, Instagram, and she makes a lot of cardigans, including hexagon cardigans. And she does, like, collections, which I thought was really cool. Um, I really don't mind, want mine to turn into, like, a business or anything, because I had my own business for 12 years, and I do not miss it. It's because of how much work it is. You don't want to work 9 to 5, so you work 24-7, basically. I just have no interest in that again. But I like crocheting, so I'll sell a few things on Facebook Marketplace. I'm going to say a few things. I mean, like, I think right now I have, like, 40 handmade pieces. <laughs> um, but that's okay. Um, I need to get my hands busy, so I might as well be making something. And I did sign up for quite a few markets this um fall and winter. I'm not gonna do any in the summer unless it's like, you know, like a 5 to 10 at night type thing. Um, let's see, what do I have coming up? Um, I think, I don't know, is October the first one? I, like, the Dark Bay Market? Oh, my phone is saying 20% low battery. Okay. Hi. So, um, I think October's the first one that I have. I wouldn't mind finding one for like September, maybe the end of August. We'll see. And then a few. I think I have two in November and one in December. The December one, I believe, is two days. So I'm sure things will sell then. If they don't, I'll donate them. But it's just nice to keep my hands busy. And out of the snacks. Because if your hands aren't busy, then your hands are busy doing something else, right? So, usually it's snacking. And I don't need the snacks. <laughs> Alright, we're at an hour and six minutes. About seven minutes now. So, I think I'll end this video. I'm just going to continue doing some crochet tonight out here on Thursday, June 27th. Um, not sure when I'll put this video up. I do have one scheduled for this coming Sunday. Or maybe I want to do some more work with that. Maybe I'll do more work on that, and this will go on Sunday. I guess I'll decide last minute like I always do. Well, I shouldn't say I always do. I do plan a lot of things ahead. Especially when it comes to the videos, because usually, you know, it takes like a week or two to make them because different sequences and stuff, so... I don't know when it'll come out on Sunday, but either way, I'll have a video out on Sunday for you. Um, maybe it's this video. Maybe it's the other one. We'll see. If you made it this far, thank you so much. Um, didn't expect you to. Didn't expect for this, for me to ramble for 67, 68 minutes. Um, I just wanted to, you know, film something and get my thoughts out of my brain and out into the open air. And plus it's such a nice night, I want to sit outside with Big Larry. So, hope everybody has a great 
weekend day evening whatever time you're watching this and i will see you around please um, like and subscribe i would appreciate it um i think at this point since i'm sticking with the youtube so far i maybe might order like a microphone um i have figured out that the issue is being my old phone the reason i got this new one is because the speakers on it stopped working and i couldn't hear anything so i'm thinking the microphone on that one is also kaput so i'm trying to use that one for more like time lapses and things where i'm not talking as much so it kind of worked out that that died and then i used this one so stay tuned for more content <laughs> have a great day